the teeming universe, an extraterrestrial field guide. What would you do if you were dropped off on a freezing dry purple planet where nothing had less than five legs? Would I be able to use the handicapped parking here? This thing is just so cute as a baby. I'm gonna take it home like that lady with the pet chimpanzee because what could possibly go wrong? And why hasn't internet historians sued me yet? All this and more on In the Teeming Universe. If you haven't seen my other videos on the Teeming Universe, you should definitely go watch them. They explain the concept of the book and also cover the life inhabiting a few alien worlds, Herceleon, Solis, Borold, Kraylon, and Thorea. The Teeming Universe is a field guide to a myriad of extraterrestrial planets containing multitude of strange alien species in the known universe. We know about these worlds because of one artist, Christian Klein. They're a great artist, and I'll be linking to their pages in the description. Without further ado, let's take a look at another one of the worlds detailed in these pages. This is the world of I. I? It's a cold, dry, Earth-like planet towards the back end of its solar system's habitable range. From the surface, it resembles a drier, dustier, purpler version of Earth with a beige-colored atmosphere and purplish-blue oceans. It was significantly smaller than the human homeworld, and was made fun of for the scientists for being the smallest known habited planet at the time of its discovery. While this sounds mean, it's apparently really into degradation. It has high amounts of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere, allowing for a greenhouse effect to make the world warm enough to be habitable. I has a wet season and a dry season. During the wet season, the planet will warm up and some of the formerly frozen and water will thaw, allowing the blackish purple plant life to spread to areas that are not habitable during the dry season. During the dry season, the water freezes again and the forests recede back to their smaller dry season population. Around the same time, dust storms will cover entire parts of the planet for weeks. They also have an increase of forest fires at this time because of the deforestation and drier climate plus static electricity from the friction between dust particles. The constant deforest and reforestation create seasonally active ecosystems. So imagine instead of a Starbucks pumpkin and spice latte coming out every fall and then leaving in the winter, it's an entire ecosystem having a population boom orgy and then all dying in a frozen location dehydration population extermination till the next generation's migration in correlation with meteorological motivation. You know what they say, young, dumb, and full of cum to old, cold, and filled with mold. The highest areas of biodiversity are in the oceans or the dense forests. The temperate areas are home to animals that live there year round rather than the other ecosystems mass boink and die system. Plants on I-8 have chitin in their cells rather than cellulose, again like earth insects, and they have a black pigment to absorb maximum light instead of a green one. But even more alien are the chemoliths. Different from both plants and animals, they use chemosynthetic means to get energy. They can appear plant-like, but are more analogous to the fungi of earth rather than the plants. Before anyone asks, no, yeah, we already tried, you can't trip on them. Animal life on I are split into three main groups, vertebrates, invertebrates, and pseudovertebrates. The pseudovertebrates typically have eight to 10 limbs and move using primarily hydraulic muscles. They they have segmented armor along their hydroxyapatite spine. They're a very diverse group of life, with members as large as the Cherry Titan, a 25-foot grazing animal. Leave a comment on what you think its meat tastes like down below. Many of the vertebrates on I-8 share common characteristics as well. They have three eyes that can see in the visible or infrared spectrum. Many have ears and nostrils signifying similar systems and behavior to our own, but some amphibious variants breathe through their skin. All vertebrates on I-8 are pentapods because they evolved from a five-limbed ancestor. There are a diverse plethora of different fifth limbs for niche purposes based on that species. Both vertebrates and pseudovertebrates have weird sideways face and mandibles like some bugs do. These vertebrate mammal-like apex predator aliens are the hellerines. At five feet from jaw to tail, they're around the size of a small human. They have thick fur, copious amounts of fat, and dense muscles to keep them warm when this ice rock drops to 20 below zero. This same dense muscle can allow for huge bursts in energy and incredible feats of physical performance. For example, a hellerine can run up to 45 miles per hour for up to 30 seconds. They have one forward-facing eye and two off slightly to the side, which gives them incredible depth perception. They can also detect prey's heat signatures using their infrared spectrum vision, which proves quite useful in hunting. Imagine ripping one and then getting murked because Bugface Wolf over there detected your fart's heat signature. They have many different color variations of their fur that helps them camouflage in different environments. They almost entirely eat meat either through hunting or scavenging, but sometimes feed on the stomach contents of dead herbivorous prey. The Hellrene have a bite force rivaling that of Earth's polar bears. They live in social groups of 10 to 20 individuals, and their favorite activity is working as a team to murder other creatures. Hellrene's social structure operates on a hierarchy with alpha, beta, subordinate, and baby roles, and extended family structures live in a den together. Hellrene give live birth. The babies are defenseless without their parents and rely on them for pre-digested nutrients that the mother or father vomits up out of the gizzard. Similar to pack-hunting animals on Earth, they use a strategy
strategy when hunting to weed out the old, the young, the sick, or the stupid to get an easy meal. Like how when Petco liquefies the ugly animals to make food for the other animals, the cream of the crop rises to the top. Their fifth limb takes the place of a bony spear which connects to the gizzard with the partially pre-digested rotten flesh in it. And then it injects this into the prey, poisoning it, killing it, consuming it, and digesting it to inject it into another one of the species members before vomiting the slurry back into its baby's face. Speaking of things that the hellrene like to poison with rotten flesh and then consume to turn into other rotten flesh to use to kill its entire family, this is the Croatian skunks. Croissant. This common herbivore can grow over 15 feet long. They have four long legs which they can use to gallop at up to 45 miles per hour, and a long muscular face with a wedge-shaped beak used for grinding up the tough foliage in their face hole. The fifth limb takes the form of a small, prolonged horn on the front of its body used to defend from predators, fight rivaling mates, or engage in sexual knife play. They're usually pretty chill during the wet season, but much more aggressive when it comes to the dry season because of the scarcity of resources. I feel you, my dude. Fasting can be hard. I really can't adjust to having jerk off for dinner. This is the ochre sand pig, a mostly subterranean animal that only goes out on the surface to forage or look for other sand pig burrows. They're low level pseudovertebrate predators in the plains ecosystem that hunt for things like skunk worms or the tashits. They have pretty bad eyesight because they live in the dark undergrounds, so they mostly navigate using these little two feely bingles on their head. At three feet long, it may look like the only defense they have is a segmented bony shell, but if scuttling away on its 10 comedically short legs doesn't work, it can roll itself up in a ball and projectile diarrhea, a harsh acidic chemical at its attacker. To find out what an additional episode in this series would be about, we're gonna go back to our Ye Tuan correspondent, Yeet. Thanks, Az. Let me know if that guy ever recovers from the sand pig acid burns. Another episode would cover the other corners of the universe filled with strange alien life, as well as maybe looking at the history of my great species. I'd like and subscribe with all notifications to see that, and whoever wouldn't, it is an idiot. Coming up on Earthwatch tonight at 11, a morbidly obese man in a tight red suit is coming to break into your house through the ceiling and steal your food in exchange for colorful boxes. Unless you're Jewish or something, then you're safe, I guess. Back to you, Az. Thanks, Yeet. I want to thank my friend and the very talented author of the Teeming Universe, Christian Klein, for getting in contact with me and providing and drawing assets for the creation of these videos. I love this book, and you should definitely go check out all of his stuff, because if you don't, you're honestly missing out. Anyways, you like this, you want to see another video about Teeming Universe, you should like, subscribe, and subscribe with all notifications, and we'll get back. Very uh <laughs> <coughs>